Welcome back to my channel. My name's Julie, if you're new here, thanks for clicking on and watching my video. Um, I do videos about over 50 lifestyle and beauty, makeup, fashion. I've got a really nice fashion video coming up on Sunday, a collaboration with Just Janie, you may have heard of her. I'll pop her channel down below um, and I'll also I will link it on Sunday. We're going to do a couple of Christmas outfits for you, so I'm excited about that. But today I'm going to do a question and answer for you. Now, I know my regular viewers, thank you so much for being a subscriber if you are, will know that normally on a Friday I do a sort of weekly roundup of things that have come in. But as I said in my last video, it's been a bit difficult recently because I'm buying lots of Christmas presents and I obviously don't want to show them on here in case my family watch. And so I think what I'm going to do is put those on hold until after Christmas. Um, I'm going to do Vlogmas, so you'll probably see... We new bits and bobs that I get in during that period but uh, after Christmas I think I'm going to do a monthly one and do a monthly roundup because quite often I've ordered things and I'm waiting for them to come and so I can't show them you in the weekly video so I think that might work a little bit better let me know what you think but today I'm going to do a question and answer um, so I've been asking uh, for questions on my channel and over on Instagram um, if you don't follow me on Instagram it's what Julie loves so it's what underscore Julie underscore loves um, and there is a link actually on my channel you can just click and click through on that one um, but yes got a couple of questions over there got some on the short video I put out on here and s some lovely ladies have asked questions in uh, under my YouTube so I've gathered them all together it might be a long video because I can waffle as you know um, but I'll do my best to get through them in a, a reasonable time frame um, yeah and I've written them all down so if you see me looking down it's just so I don't forget the questions um, so I'm going to start off with Lucy. So Lucy asked a couple of questions. Which foundation do you love is the first one. As you all know, I use the Catrice foundation. It's the Hyaluronic one. I'll link it for you. It's got a really long title. I do like it. Sometimes if I, if I use too much, I find it a bit heavy on my skin. The other one that I really enjoy is the Bare Minerals one, and that's more of a, a tinted moisturiser. I use that on days when I want to look because if I've hardly got any makeup on, so, you know, maybe on a Sunday when we're just going out to the garden centre or whatever. Um, and I'm almost out of that as well. Um, I've been through lots of foundations over the years, but it's really important to me that foundations are cruelty free. One of my lovely subscribers, I think it might have been Liz, mentioned that Estee Lauder are not cruelty free. I really hadn't realised that and so I won't be ordering any more products from them. I'll use what I've got but I won't be ordering any more. And so actually I am on the lookout for a new foundation and somebody mentioned, sorry I can't remember who it was, but just under the recent video I did on applying foundation in a different way, mentioned the Bare Minerals powder and I've always fancied trying it. I was, I was a little bit worried it was going to be clingy in my uh, fine lines and you know and the marionette lines etc but she doesn't find that and so she's persuaded me because I was ordering um, the Burn Minerals Tinted Moisturiser anyway. I know that Burn Minerals are cruelty free so I think what I'm going to do is order a new tinted moisturiser, order the powder and I'm thinking perhaps I could use it over the top of the tinted moisturiser or even on its own and I think what I will also do is order the brush so that I've got the right tool for the job. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm about to try that. So let me know if you'd be interested in me letting you know how I go on with that. Um, I've always fancied trying it, but never have. Uh, the, I've seen one advertised recently. It's been all over Instagram. Every time I click on Instagram, it's on there. I can't remember the name of it, but that was also a powder foundation. I love the idea of just dipping my brush in and sort of swizzing it over my face and it being done. So we'll see. I'm going to order it and I will let you know how I get on with it. I've had other favourites in the past. Um, I don't mind the Maybelline Fit Me foundation. That's okay. Um, I used to buy the NYX foundation. Um, my favourite one used to be the, is it CYO foundation from Boots? It was really cheap. It was a lovely, lightweight, glowy foundation. Just glided on. Felt great. Felt like you had nothing on your skin and they discontinued it. Um, and I've looked for it in my colour sort of on ebay etc but i think the last time i looked it was 30 pounds for a little bottle and it used to be four or five pounds in boots so if anybody's got a good recommendation for foundation please leave it below um 
I don't like it too matte. I don't want my face to look dry, but I also don't want it to be too glowy. I'm looking for something in between that flatters my fine lines, sort of makes them disappear a little bit. Um, but as I said, I am going to try the Burr Minerals powder. So if you've used that, let me know. But I know one of my su subscribers uses it and loves it. So, so she's never gone back to liquid foundation. So I'm really interested to see what I think about that. So yeah, oh, that's five minutes on foundation. This is going to be, I know if you've got a, a coffee and snacks or tea and snacks. Um, second question from Lucy. Menopause and hot flushes. Just asked how I cope with the menopause. If I've got any tips for hot flushes hot flashes, whatever you want to call them. So I was 50 when my period stopped. Um, I'm 56 now, so I've been going through the menopause for quite a few years. I would say I'm probably coming out of the other side now. Um, I really, I said the first two or three years, I really struggled. Um, I had terrible hot flushes, particularly at night time. Um, my sleep was all over the place. Um, aching bones and joints and just feeling lethargic and not myself um, and I kept thinking about HRT and wondering whether it would work for me. I don't have any history of breast cancer or anything like that in my family so there was nothing that would stop me from trying it. Anyway, eventually somebody, uh, my consultant who I'd see for my arthritis asked if I was on HRT and said if it was possible, if my GP felt it was the right thing, it would help to support my joints and my bones uh, with the osteoarthritis. So I went to see my GP and she gave me um, the patches and the tablet that I take every day. I've been on those about two years and I have to say they've worked brilliantly for me. The first lot she gave me were a slightly lower strength. So we upped the strength and from then on, I've never looked back really. My sleep has improved, the hot flushes have I've gone really. The only time I have a hot flush is in the summertime, if I drink a hot cup of tea, that can kind of bring on a hot flush, but the nighttime ones have gone, you know, the night sweats where you're wet through and the covers are off. Um, my sleep has improved, uh, my skin has improved. I feel like I'm supporting my joints. Um, I've not had any difficulties from taking the medication either I've not had any side effects so for me HRT was the key and you know I will stay on it as long as um, it's healthy to do so because it's really made me feel much better about the menopause and everything around that it works for me I know it's not for everybody and I know some people have sort of certain factors in their health and their history that mean they can't use it but for me that's what worked um yeah so I haven't got any particular tips because I really struggled with it. But as I said, HRT was the secret for me. I realise it's not for everybody, but there are lots of different things out there. So definitely go and see your GP, I think, I think would be my advice. Um, okay. Elizabeth asked, I think it's Liz, uh, asked um, about living in a multi-generational household. Um, now we, if you don't know, if you're new to my channel, uh, the oldies will know, um, the subscribers, that I live with, in a house with my daughter and her husband and my grandson, who's almost 50, he's 15, and my mum and dad. We have an annex on the side of our house. We converted our garage into an annex and my mum and dad live there. So it came about because um, we used to live on a boat. I'll link the video that talks about living on a boat um, if you're interested in watching that. We did that for about three or four years. We sold the boat. We were looking for a house to buy. Around that time, my mum and dad, uh, my dad's in his 80s, my mum's in her late 70s, were getting a bit more uh, frail and a bit more needing a bit more care. And they lived in a rented property. And my daughter was living in a rented house and was also looking for a house. And one day somebody suggested, why don't we pool our resources and buy a house together? We had the cash, um, so it meant that we could sort of put a really good amount down on the house. My daughter had the capability for getting a very good mortgage, and there are family mortgages now that you can you can get. So that's what we did. But we wanted somewhere where my mum and dad could come and live with us because I was spending so much time driving backwards and forwards to mum and dad's house 
for various things, bits of shopping and medical things they needed and appointments, etc. My dad does still drive, um, or he did before he's had a stroke recently. Um, but yeah, it does work for us. Now, Liz asked a specific question. She asked uh, Eliz Elizabeth, I, I can't I can't remember, I think she she's called Liz. Um, do you annoy each other? <laughs> um yeah, we do sometimes. Uh the house is split in a way that we have sort of have the right if so if you, as you're looking at the house my daughter and her husband and grandson live on the right side of the house we live on the left and then mum and dad live in the annex so that's fine mum and dad are very separate in their annex they come into the main kitchen to do cooking etc um we have a little laundry in between the properties so we can all use the laundry area um so that works well my daughter tends to eat later in the evening so they're in the kitchen after we've eaten usually mum and dad sort of eat mid-afternoon usually um and so the kitchen really is the only area where we kind of all come together so occasionally i'll go in the kitchen and somebody's in there cooking and i'll have to wait but it's really not a big deal um there are certain things like you know the I would say 95% of the time we get on really well. We we meet regularly to discuss anything in the house. We split everything 50-50. Um, if we want to do something in the house, we tend to be doing it in our own areas. If it's, say, a garden decision or something like that, then we will sit down and have a chat. We get, we get on very well. I have to say we all get on really well. And so... That's a good starting point. Um, it's been really useful having mum and dad close by, especially my dad had a stroke recently. So obviously I was on hand to deal with that and get the emergency services and get into the hospital, etc. And I was really grateful that he was just next door. Um, occasionally somebody gets on my nerves, but I mean, Dave gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> I've always lived with him. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one, really. Very occasionally, I think, God, it'd be much easier if we could just make the decision and do it. But also, I would say that's a tiny, tiny little bit of the puzzle. It means that we can live in a beautiful area, a nice big house, and afford to live here. We, we wouldn't have bought a house this big just for us. Um, we live in a gorgeous area. My daughter and son-in-law do lots of walking. So there's lots of hills around here they can go out walking. We see a lot of my grandson, a lot more than we would do uh, if we lived separately. And it, for this time in our life, it works. We planned a 10 year plan. So we, we all committed to doing this for 10 years. At the end of that 10 years, who knows what will happen? You know, my daughter and son-in-law might want to buy something different we might want to move into something smaller i don't know where my mum and dad will be at so you know they're all decisions for the future but we we've all committed to 10 years so that that is the longer term plan so yeah it works for us i don't think it'd work for everybody i know some people are very pri private and like their own space but i have to say that dave and i have our own sitting room there's a door on there so if anybody wants us they'll knock um, we have a nice big bedroom that we can use as sort of a evening place as well. We can sit and watch TV. So it 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 works well. It works well for us. I wouldn't say it'd work for everybody. Um, my brothers have said to me, I could not live near mum and dad. But because I'm the only girl, I think, and I've always been quite close to my mum and dad, I think really it would only work for us. I don't think it would work with my brothers. I think, I think they would drive each other mad. But I... I kind of set the rules out very early on that, you know, we were living our own lives. I didn't want to be with my mum and dad 24 seven, but if they needed me or they were stuck or they needed help with something, I was there. And other than that, they live their life and we live our life. So yeah, don't know what else to say really. It works for us, It's it it works for us. I hope that's answered your question, Elizabeth. Um, Beverly asked me about my working life so far and my hopes for the future. And I think um, Bronwyn as well asked me about my career. Um, okay, so I've had quite a varied career. When I met my husband, 
uh, when I was very young and I just left school, I was an office junior. So I worked as a, went on to work as a secretary. I learned to type, um, an old fashioned type secretary where I did audio typing. And I was kind of a personal assistant to the head accountant in a company that I worked for. I did that before I had my children. Then I had my daughter quite quickly after we got married, about a year after we got married, Sam came along and I didn't work. Then I had my son, Michael, who was, there's only 11 months between Samantha and Michael. So very quickly we had two children. And then a couple of years after that, we had David. So we had three children under five. And obviously I stayed at home and looked after the children. It wasn't an option for us to have a nursery childcare. And to be fair, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be at home with the children. So that's what I did for quite a long time. Um, then I was just getting to the point where David was seven. And I was just thinking about what I'd like to do because I was still quite young at that point. I think he was 28, 29. Um, and thinking, do I want to go back to work? How could I fit it in around the children? And then I found out I was pregnant with Danny. That was a bit of a shock, I'm not gonna lie. A lovely shock, but a shock. So we started again then with baby things. So Danny came along and I stayed at home until he went to, I did a little bit of child minding, so I looked after other people's children alongside uh, Danny as well. And then when he went to nursery, I decided I wanted to go back and do um, an English degree at university. So that's what I did. I went off to, he went to nursery and I went off to university and I managed to fit in picking up and collecting from school. Dave's always worked full time and quite often worked um long days, always had his own company. So he helped out where he could, but I was the main child carer really because he was the main wage earner. So I went off to university and I did a degree and then I decided I was going to do a PGCE, which is a postgraduate certificate of education, which I did in um, adult education, specialising in basic skills for adults. So adults with different um, learning difficulties, dyslexia and um, autism and lots of different things and reasons why people had not learned to read and write. So I specialised in that. Um, so I did my PGCE and then I went off to work in a college, an adult education college as a basic skills tutor. So I did that for a while and then I went and worked for a charity um, that worked with people with um, visual impairments, blind people, visual impairments and helped them with computer work and looking to get back into education or looking to get into work. Um, so again, using my, my degree and my PGCE to teach people how to um, develop their English skills and overcome their um, disabilities to, to live how they wanted to live, to sort of get rid of the barriers. And then from there, I went to work at a college as a dyslexia tutor. Um, I got the job as head of dyslexia, so I had four or five tutors who worked underneath me, which I enjoyed. And then I was promoted to um, the special educational needs curriculum manager, which meant it was a big step up and it meant that I had a big team of people. I think there was something like 40 members of staff, um, which included um, tutors and teaching assistants, um, people who were temporary, people who were permanent. So it was a big role. It was long days. It was, you know, leaving the house at half past six in the morning, not getting back well half past six at night. And I did that for four or five years and it was very much um, a management role. So the teaching side of things disappeared and I was managing a team of people. I was planning timetables, making sure that students had cover wherever they were in the college, um, assessing students who came in, meeting with parents, uh, carers. So it was very much a high level admin role. And I didn't, I got to the point where I felt like it was very stressful, very corporate, a lot of politics in higher education. 
and I really wasn't enjoying it. I'd moved away from the thing that I did enjoy, which was teaching. And so um, I had a chat with Dave. By this time, I was earning really decent money. Uh, he's always earned a reasonable wage, a good wage, which is great. Um, and I said, I'm not, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not happy. And as he always does, said, well, you know, don't do it. I can stop. So I thought I need to find something I can do from home, uh, but that stimulates me that I'm interested in. And I started selling uh, ladies clothing online. I did eBay reselling um, and I did that for about 10 years. I really enjoyed it at the beginning. I really enjoyed it. But as I got to the end of that, eBay became very different. There's lots of other competition now, lots of other online platforms, Vinted, for instance, and I just wasn't enjoying it in the same way. The eBay platform has changed quite a lot. The fees had gone up, things had changed, and I was looking for something different. And because I'm in the lucky position that I didn't have to earn a full-time wage, um, I decided I'd do YouTube. I love clothes and fashion and makeup. And this is answering a couple of people asking me why, why do you do YouTube? And I felt like I wanted to share that. I watched other people's videos and thought I, I could do that. I could share what I buy and what I wear and what I use. Um, so it was really a release and outlet for me. Um, and you know, if I ever make any money, I'd say brilliant, but that's not what I'm doing it. Um, I've already had a couple of um, people contact me about collaborations, companies rather than people um, that are not something I want to promote. And so I'm not under any pressure from anybody to do anything that I don't want to do. I'm, I don't have to make money. Um, it's, it's just a fun thing for me. I'm 56, so I kind of see it as something I can do through into retirement. And yeah, so that's why I do YouTube. So I just enjoy it. I like the interaction. I like sharing products. I've always been an avid YouTube watch, watcher as well. And, you know, watching people like Caroline, Mrs. M and Carla and, you know, Jane from Just Janie and the Geordie Grandma. And I thought they seem like a really nice group of ladies and I feel like I could do that. And so I, I'm just doing it. <laughs> That's it. So, and I like talking to the camera. I'm very comfortable talking to the camera. I'm not shy. You know, I don't have to do a million takes to film a video. I generally can sort of say what I'm, I need to say. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm doing YouTube. I enjoy it. Okay, next question. Uh, so I've answered, because Louise and Bronwyn asked me about why, why I wanted to become a YouTuber. So that's what I what I do um sandy asked me it's a lady on instagram what three makeup items would you take to a desert island so or, or toiletries i guess um so this is just a one of those questions that you have to think about so i thought about it and i thought i'd probably take a bar of soap because i could wash with it you could get in the sea and wash with it i could wash my hair with it It'd just be the easiest thing. I could wash my face with it, you know. I could keep clean with a bar of soap and they do last ages. So a bar of soap, a concealer, because I couldn't bear having dark circles under my eyes every day. And I know there'd be nobody there to see me, but I would feel better if I had concealer on. And moisturiser, because I would imagine you'd be pretty dry on a desert island. Your skin would get very dry. Oh, sunblock. Maybe a sunblock moisturiser combination would work better. So yeah, those are the three things I would take. Um, but then I'm thinking, would I need a brush? But you could just pile your hair on top of your head, couldn't you, and stick a twig in it? Nobody would care. <laughs> so yeah, that's the answer to that one. And then uh, finally, because I've been chatting for a long time, Sue asked me about weight loss on one of my videos recently, and I thought I'd include it in this um, question and answer video weight loss so I don't know where I was up to last time but I was trying uh, fasting and I think I mentioned in one of my videos that I gradually stopped doing that because we'd gone on holiday yeah that's right we'd gone on holiday to Devon and 
I'd ended up eating breakfast because everybody else was eating breakfast and gradually just I stopped doing it. So just to give you a little bit of history, I have a, a gluten intolerance. I'm not celiac. I possibly could be celiac, but I've never been tested for it. But gluten makes me really quite ill. Gives me terrible stomach problems, um, bad headaches, itchy skin. I just don't do well with gluten. So I gave up gluten about five years ago. But just the last six months or so, I started having this upset tummy again, as if I was eating gluten and I wasn't. And I did wonder whether dairy was a problem. So I decided to cut out dairy. I'm not a massive dairy eater anyway. I really don't drink a lot of milk. I had milk in my coffee at lunchtime and that was it. Um, I had yogurt in the morning and the other thing, I occasionally eat cheese, but I'm not a massive cheese eater. So I decided to give up dairy. So I swapped out my morning breakfast yogurt for soy yogurt, which has been fine. Get along fine with that. I have changed my milk at lunchtime to oat milk, which took a little bit of getting used to, but it's fine. The rest of the time I drink black tea, so it's not a problem. And my uh, cheese, I bought some vegan hard cheese that's like a like a mature cheddar, but it's soya based. And that's been fine as well. In fact, I really enjoy it. So that was dairy gone. And my tummy is much happier, less bloated. And the other thing that has sort of been happening is that I've been eating less and less meat. I don't eat red meat anyway. I was getting to the point with chicken where I actually couldn't cut up the chicken fillet. It was making me physically heave. I don't know the texture. Um, and I've been thinking about the planet and trying to do my best for the planet. My, my daughter's vegan and so is her husband. My husband's not, mum and dad are not. Um, and so I'd been having a few more vegan meals. I'd been getting some recipes from them. And about a month ago, I thought, I'm just going to try being vegan for a week and see how my body feels. Now, when I started out at first, um, because I'd already changed, I eat gluten-free anyway, and I'd already changed to um, no dairy. So it was really just cutting the meat out. And I tried plant-based sausages, which I really liked. Um, I always cut with lots of vegetables anyway. And to be honest with you, I found it so easy to become vegan. Now, for me, it's partly because of allergies and partly because I feel like it's really important to do your bit for the planet. I am certainly not advocating everybody become vegan. My husband's not vegan. He has meat. Um, he eats with me sometimes. The rest of the time he eats what he wants. But I'm about a month in now. I've never felt better. My skin feels amazing. My tummy is not bloated anymore. Um, what else? Um, I've never had an upset tummy since I started, which is unusual for me. I'm, at least once a week was having a, an upset tummy. That's gone. Um, I just, it's difficult to describe. I feel lighter in my body. Now I buy cruelty free, free makeup anyway. I buy vegan leather products wherever possible. I don't buy leather. And so ethically, I kind of was going down that route anyway. Um, so for me, it just feels the right thing. I know it's not the thing for everybody and I'm not saying everybody should do it, but for me, it's working really well. I've lost 10 pounds in that month without counting a calorie or thinking about how much food I'm eating. It's just naturally come off. Um, I don't eat eggs either. Um, I'm fully vegan now. Um, I couldn't, the thought of eating an egg was just, I, did, I couldn't think of it. So it just, it's just something that's naturally developed in me. Um, I watched quite a few documentaries. I have read a lot of uh, interesting articles about um, autoimmune disease and about arthritis and how an anti-inflammatory diet, a vegan diet is very much anti-inflammatory. So lots of green leafy vegetables. I take a multivitamin, which I did anyway. I take B12 every day and I take uh, D vitamins as well. 
Um, I also take some iron in that multivitamin, but I was taking those before. I'm not taking those because I've become vegan. I'm take, I was taking those anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm currently doing. I feel like I'll eat this way forever. I am very happy and comfortable and it's not been a big transition for me, but because of all those factors that I, I mentioned before. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much, well, I am vegan now and I have been for about a month. And for me, it's working really well. And the weight loss has just been a natural byproduct of that. I didn't do it to lose weight. I did it because I wanted to feel as well as possible and I want my joints to be as good as possible for as long as possible. So that's why I've um, decided to become vegan. And yeah, it's working really well. But I obviously won't mention it unless people are interested in me talking about it. I just wanted to answer this question from uh, Sue, just to tell her where I was at with my weight loss um, journey, because it is a journey, isn't it? <laughs> it's been a long old journey for me, but that to me at the moment is not the important thing. The important thing is to eat as well as I can and feel as well as I can. And the weight loss is a byproduct of that. So you know, I might lose more weight, I might not, and I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm just doing the best I can for myself. And as I said, please don't think that I am advocating everybody becomes a vegan. It's working for me. I feel healthy and that's what I'm going to do. But I live with meat eaters. My husband eats meat. My mum and dad eat meat. My grandson eats meat. Um, we've got a dinner party on Friday night, actually. I've got my brother coming round. There'll be a vegan cottage pie and there'll be a beef cottage pie. And so, you know, we're very much live and let live. You do, you do you. And that's what I would say, you do you. But that's what I'm doing at the moment. And that's how I've lost the way that I've lost. So yeah, that's the end of the questions. Um, I've waffled for quite a while. So I hope that's answered your questions. I'm happy to answer questions in other videos as well. If you've got any burning question, pop it in in the description box and I will answer it for you in the next video. So see you on Sunday with my um, Christmas outfits. As I said, that's a collaboration with just Janie. So I will pop Janie's details below. So watch my video and then pop over and, and see her and watch her videos. Hope you enjoy that. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye for now.